I'm now being joined by a former director at the State Security Service, the DSS. It was is now a vice president and alumni association of the National Institute of Security Studies, Mr. Mike Ejofo. And with him is a former commissioner of police, Mr. Emmanuel Ujuku. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you for having um, One thing we're glad in one's heart, and it's a fact that when we're making progress, but when you hear the kind of warning coming from Governor Zulum, uh, it wasn't mincing words in any, any sense. And perhaps let's glean from your uh, wealth of experience in intelligence, Mr. Ejiofo. What can you deduce from Governor Zulum that is perhaps most important for the nation to take note of? Yeah, the Governor Zulum, uh, as a matter of fact, is somebody I, I like to associate with because of his leadership qualities. He sees things and say them the way they are, not playing politics. The issue of peace work in uh, the Sahel and uh, even the Northeast Chad and uh, is a very serious challenge. And uh, like he said, it should not be allowed to grow. And uh, uh, the question is, uh, I don't think government has even allowed it for any time to grow. But what he's what he emphasizing is that the need for them to, for government to take more decisive steps to bring the activities of the ISWAP to, under control. Recall that uh, ISWAP, you know, tried, unlike Boko Haram, even though they are violent, unlike Boko Haram, tries to uh, fill the uh, governance gap within the area, thereby winning the confidence of the, local, the locals in that place. They provide uh, uh, boreholes, uh, impose taxes, and, uh, and if this is allowed to continue, the likelihood of them uh, uh, establishing an alternative government is possible, undermining the government. So I completely associate with uh, Governor Zulum in his call that you should not be allowed to grow. Mm. But and I'm going to come to the point that what happened with the American operation against the terrorists. In, and is there any relation, is there any correlation? Could, should we be happy with that kind of development if there is a, uh, an attack on the global uh, structure? Well, uh, this is not the first time uh, America is attacking the structure of ISIS, or ISIS, as the case may be. Our own ISWAP. Is aligned with them. They have a link. And what happens up there also affects what they're doing. But their financiers may be a little different. Now, these ones feed on the ungovernable space within the Sahel. They feed on it. Most of the states around us, nations around us, have a lot of issues, political issues, economic issues, and uh, issues of migration. A lot of free arms are available in these areas within the Sahel, which are close to Nigeria. So no matter what's happening with ISIL or ISIS in uh, Turkey, as you just mentioned, uh, as, um, I mean Syria, Syria, as you just mentioned, mm -hmm. it may not have a, a major effect on the stability and the viability and the level of violence of ISWAP that we have that is operating close to our borders. We must pay special attention to that group. And just like the governor said, uh, it's, um, the thing is beyond, uh, it's not something we should play with kid gloves. With the kind of injury and perhaps the death of one of the leaders of Boko Haram that we saw, um, the, what the governor was saying here looks so much that we may have decimated Boko Haram in some ways, but ISWAP is one uh, entity that we need to pay more attention to. Do you have the same fear that the, government, uh, the, the governor has, and specifically on the point that the military need to change strategy? Yes, uh, I don't think uh, the military approach, the kinetic approach alone, will solve the problem. Don't also forget that uh, uh, ISWAP is an affiliate of uh, ISIS, a breakaway faction of uh, Boko Haram. So the, the operations of Boko Haram and uh, uh, ISWAP are slightly, slightly different. They, they try to win the confidence of the locals 
So that's the point I was making earlier, that uh, government should concentrate on the locals, make them feel, feel that governance gap, you know, by providing social amenities, which the ISIS, the Addis Swap, is now providing just like the ISIS is doing. And if they have the confidence of the locals, they undermine government, they gladly pay tax to, to, to Islam, and uh, they operate freely. So the governor's concern is very, very much in line. And uh, I think uh, government should attach. We cannot just go with uh, the issue of uh, military approach. Try to see we are going to election, you know. And uh, it's very difficult for us to conduct election when these people are there mm -hmm. having on government or government space and taking in charge of the area. One area, I mean, for you are a security expert, you perhaps you know more than a lot of us who are listening to you tonight, is a concept that we have the fighter jets that we just got from America. Fine, you said the kinetic form should not be the only way to fight these entities. But when we wonder, when you have the firepower, why don't we use it? The question is, the firepower we have can it quell can it tame these entities? Well, thank God the firepower is there now. But uh, I'm not sure it's sufficient. Uh, firepower alone cannot deliver the dividends. You still require actionable intelligence. You still require the cooperation of all and sundry. And uh, if, if the fighter jets are deployed and as they're, as they're being deployed, they must be focused, they must go to a special target and that target must be informed by intelligence. So that intelligence aspect also has to be beefed up so that these aircrafts can operate effectively and deliver the deadly weapons. Hmm. What's your take on that, Mr. Well, my take on that is uh, not until recently that when uh, this uh, group, uh, the bandits, were declared a uh, um, terrorist group, that uh, we've seen the deployment of the Tukana aircraft. Prior to this, we've just been hearing Nigeria acquired the uh, Tucano aircraft. Super Tucano aircraft. And, uh, you know, the, the reason for cutting such operations was because of human rights abuse. Mm. When the aircraft was being uh, purchased, they were, t you, you remember the Lee? Uh, the Lee. Lee, uh, yes. The Santa uh, Lee. Uh, uh, where Nigeria was accused of uh, human, human rights, rights abuses violations. And, yeah. uh, which led to blacklist and we now start to recall that the previous government had to go through the black market to buy arms. So I think Nigeria was being careful and cautious in its approach. But now that we have, uh, uh, they have been declared a uh, terrorist group with this ISWAP, of course, ISWAP has been, always been a, a terrorist group. Mm -hmm. So we should be deployed. But my fear is uh, when you deploy just like that, we're going to have a lot of collateral damage. So it should be, it should be worked in a way. You know that ISWAP, even though they're affiliated to, um, they operate some of them like the bandits, you will have to be very careful in uh, assessing such situations so that if they're moving out from their own environment, they can be attacked. But the, what about the use of drones? I mean, exactly. which is supposed that's to be that's part that's of intelligence gadgets where you are able to even make, uh, mount surveillance and be able to identify your target. I think that is supposed to be the norm, isn't it? Or don't we have it? Well, yeah, we, we do have. But you see, the, 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 at times I sit down privately and ask myself that question. Does it mean we don't have effective drones? Go to the Northwest, for instance. You see the activities of the bandits, terrorists, I don't call them bandits. They, they operate freely, and I ask, before they come and uh, kidnap hundreds with motorbike, don't we have drones to locate them? Or it has gone like uh, the issue of uh, the cameras that were installed in uh, Abuja mm. that is not working? But, but correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm watching too much of sci-fi and too much of detective movies. Mm. <clears throat> we see a situation where remotely, Americans carry out operations far away from their shores and they monitor with drones and see what's happening real time and they are able to even give command from the former uh, off-site, I mean, off the site 
and they give command. I thought that, are we that sophisticated? So talking about sophistication, you heard what the governor said, that these guys are sophisticated, that they have the, the, the monetary power. Do we have that sophistication? I, I don't know about the sophistication of our military. Nigeria is a developing country, and many, almost everything is developing. So also our military firepower. Issue of drones that are mostly unmanned, that are unmanned, and um, there's need for collaboration with sister countries outside of Nigeria who have better equipment. I'm, uh, I'm sure that uh, some of these countries, you mentioned, America and the rest of them, they have things that are more than drones, that are hanging in space, and the drones feed them, and then they feed back to some base stations. We need to collaborate with them. When some Americans were kidnapped somewhere in the northeast, it didn't take them days. They picked the location, use of drones, use of high-powered intelligence equipment, and they were able to get it. Nigeria needs to collaborate with these groups, even within West Africa, within the African region, and outside. Wherever you can get help to solve a problem that is choking you, you get that help, and it's legitimate. Nigeria can afford it, and I think we should go for them. This information coming from the federal government, a lot of Nigerians have been asking, who are those financing terror? Now we know, we don't know names. We don't have the names because that is not captured in what the minister said today. He just told us that there are 96 financiers of terrorism in Nigeria, while 424 associates and supporters of the financiers were, have been also uncovered. I mean, we've asked the minister of justice to give names. Can, how much of help would this kind of information give? Well, uh, it's uh, like uh, Mr. Juku was saying. You remember that uh, the governor also called for support from other countries that uh, we should not be fighting this war alone. You know, he, he made that call, and I think government should also follow it. Like he, 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 the example he gave, the, the Americans came here, operated though with uh, our security services to uh, neutralize uh, those kidnappers and freed. Yes. So why don't we go for such a uh, this? You also, in uh, 2015, before 2015, we know had mercenaries. He also called for uh, uh, mercenaries. Can we still use that, make use of mercenaries of at this course. time? Of course, why not? With the experience we had, we have What experience we have? We just have to. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue we have to look at uh, critically. You, on the, so when you the, talk the, about mercenaries, does it put a question mark on the capability of our own men? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. When they are coming, like the mercenaries, when they are coming, they are coming from foreign countries, they are coming with um, more sophisticated equipment. You see, the problem we have in Nigeria is that there's so much corruption. You agree with me? And uh, before the budget is released, how much is budgeted for? How much is released? Even that one released is shortchanged. Uh, uh, somewhere along the line, you have oversight function. Before you get, they go and buy sub, uh, substandard equipment. So the oversight does not even have any reason to question because they are compromised. So that's a problem. That information of 424 associates, 96 financiers of terror in Nigeria, how much of help with that information? I don't know what we want to do with that because. Informing Nigerians that there are four and something financiers of terrorism and you have not arrested them, to finance terrorism is a criminal offense. The laws are there. Activate the legal process, get them arrested. This is not the first time governments, both federal and states, have told you they know the financiers of this and this. Could it be a but reason? Could there be a reason? No action. Yeah, could there be a reason why it is they are trying to keep the, the names? Yeah, for political reasons, because some of their allies and uh, colleagues are involved. So they want to hide themselves. Because it's a group, it's like a court, court war. And there are disaster merchants, those who benefit from disaster. And some of whom may have compromised those who are even saying they know, they know, they know, they know. So there's a lot of compromise there. And as far as you're concerned, the government should come out with the names. Just is that, is that we, don't, we don't need to hear the names. But could that Go help? Get them, and, uh, get them arrested, prosecute them, put them behind bars. That's where they belong. How easy you is that? You can't allow somebody to be How easy is that? So more tension on Nigerians, so more hardship, keeping us down, killing our women, killing our boys, raping people, and that you're just saying you have their names. What do I do with the names? 
That's not that's not population census. How easy it I mean if you say people are financing terror, how easy is it to to prosecute them? It's it's, it's not difficult. The government has come up with the names of uh, the financiers and the groups financing these groups, and they are in custody. So what we expect? I expect the Nigerian media, the journalists, you for instance, to, for a follow up. These issues have been raised. Yes, we we'll clap for government that this thing has been done. Any follow up? After two, three days, we forget about We all suffer from collective... We've had the Attorney General of the yeah. Federation on mm -hmm. three occasions on the program. Yes. And one of the reasons he gave is that this has to be meticulously done because there are investigations in all of this. That's a question I'm asking. You guys are the security expert, and that's the reason why I'm asking. How difficult is it to be able to, to get these people? Government go out and prosecute these people to serve as this land. At least, if we know some of them by names, you name them, and... Uh, they are seen. They, they have brothers. They have uh, uh, relations, and that will serve as deterrent. On a that. final note, where do we go from here? The governor sound a note of warning, and the minister has spoken. I mean, it's coming on the same day, and we're going into an election period. From your own point of view, thirty seconds. What? Where should we be looking at? What should the government be doing right now? Well, that's my greatest concern now. Time is not on our side. But government must do something to stabilize the security environment before the election. Mm. Mr. Ojuku, a lot more has to be done. Governor has said so, not just governor, there are others who are also privy to what he has just said. These things should be acted upon right now before they put the whole nation on fire. The now we, we can't even do census because of this. Now we, can't, we may not be able to do election. The president has said, in, he told the people in the Northeast that very soon, we see some very drastic action. Maybe we should expect That's our those actions. That's prayer. our prayer. It gladdens my heart to hear that. I hope it works. Mr. Emmanuel Ujuku, thank you so much for coming. And thank Mr. You. Michael Jofo, it's good to hear your expert uh, opinions on this, these issues. Very informed ones too and experienced ones. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Well, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shion Kimale. Bye-bye.